it all came from uh, rotating this rectangle, the same rectangles that we used to find the area under the curve using the Riemann sum. But in this case, when we rotate those rectangles, we get cir or rotated circles, rather disc, because of the thickness of those uh, rectangles. And then we added those, uh, the volumes of those circles to obtain an integral to find the volume of a solid of revolution. So the first cases that we did were examples in which the, ro the rotation was either about the x-axis or the y-axis. Well, when it came to the x-axis, we used functions of x, but when it came to the y-axis, we used functions of y. In the, next, the, the last example that we covered last time was one in which the axis of rotation was not an x-axis, not the x-axis or the y-axis, but some other axis displaced an axis away from the uh, from either the x or the y-axis. And we did one example and about how we set each situation. And actually, I'm going to cover one example of each. So the first co the first case that we covered was one in which the axis of rotation is below the region of, of integration. The next example is going to have it upside down. And actually, I'm going to fix this about y equals to 4. It's going to be about the line y equals to 6, right? Because, well, the results are not going to be a, uh, a hollow region in this case. So, well, and I'm going to use the same integral over and over just for the sake of time. Uh, that is integrate the region y equals to 2x and y equals x squared. All right? But in this case, be careful, check this out. We are not rotating about the x-axis anymore. Okay? That's one thing. Number two, uh, our region of integration will actually let me make more space for this. Let me do the region again. I need space. So, in this case, well, this is the point zero, 0, the origin, and we got the x intercept to be x equals to 2. And the y value related to that point is going to be 4, all right? So that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, our line of rotation this time is the horizontal line y equals to 6. So in this case, this is y equals to 4. I'm going to go two more units and draw the, the line of rotation, the axis of rotation represented by this dashed line. Well, so this is how the rotation is going to look like. So that little region bounded by that diagonal line and that parabola is going to rotate this way. And well, you can always think of this uh, dashed line, which is our axis of rotation, as a mirror. So the same picture has to be, well, in of, cor of course, in the mirror, in a mirror fashion, has to go like this. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six units. One, two, three, four, five, six units. And that's going to look like this. All right? It should look like that, rotated about that line. All right, now, check this out so we can compare what we did last time and you can see what we do today. To define the volume actually without having the hollow part, we did this representative rectangle setting or drawing it from the axis of rotation all the way up to the outermost radius of the, of the, of the region in this case. Well, this solid from the axis of rotation will have this outermost, outermost radius, which is the diagonal line, and will also have this innermost radius, which is the parabola y equals to x squared. This time, in a very similar way, we're going to have 
from the axis of rotation from the axis of rotation the outermost point will be the parabola and the innermost will be the diagonal line well but ultimately what is it that we want to find okay let me do this maybe in a slightly different way um, so number one from the axis of rotation to to the region that we want to integrate all right so that's the same yes um, does the bar reach the very bottom of the x-axis or does it stop at the uh... oh it stops at the curve okay. right here mm -hmm. stops at the curve so this would be the whole volume minus the hollow part and the hollow part is bounded by the diagonal line the outermost radius is bounded by the parabola okay are you guys following me with this picture so far okay so well so let's define this as a that's going to be our big r and our little r that's to define the outermost radius and the innermost radius respectively well individually top minus bottom and another top minus bottom for each individual radii okay in this case the top will be uh, the line y equals to 6 minus y equals to x squared and for the inner radius this will be the horizontal line y equals to 6 minus y equals to 2x all right and well doing top minus bottom as usual and later we will do rightmost minus leftmost let's do the same so let's set up um, uh, an expression for big r so that's going to be 6 minus x squared and little r 6 minus 2x and from here we have everything ready to set up the integral all right so let's see the integral will be volume pi times the integral from a to b big r squared minus little r squared with respect x okay and from here well just substitute the information that we got from before right that's all we need to do volume equals pi integral from 0 to 2 because these are limits with respect x and uh, 6 minus x squared quantity squared minus 6 minus 2x quantity squared and of course for these problems we will only set up the problem not compute the integral because that's going to take about half of the lecture squaring the binomials combining like terms integrating fundamental theorem of calculus even though one of the limits is zero that's going to save some work but that's going to take forever all right and just in case you're curious and you want to do this on your own this should give you 32 pi over 5 as a final answer all right So that's one example, that's another example, one in which rotate vertically, having a horizontal uh, axis of rotation displaced in the previous example, having that line below, in this example having that line above. Now we're going to go in the other direction, the same region of integration, 2x and y equals x squared. But in this case, we are going to have a rotation about a vertical line, about the line x equals to negative 5. Okay, so let's count 5 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all right, we're going to do the rotation this way, and when we rotate this region, um, 
this region right here should reflect on the other side of the of the axis of revolution that is this way All right and you can think of this uh, like a wall if you will washer in a, in a horizontal position well in this case as opposed to the previous couple of examples because we are rotating about a vertical axis in the same way that we rotated about the y-axis we need need functions of, of y. So we need every, th every function that we're given, we need to represent it in terms of functions of y. Well, lucky for us, these, these are really not too complicated to rewrite. So y equals x squared. Take the square root on both sides, x equals plus or minus the square root of x. But in this case, yes, we're getting two different solutions, plus and minus. However, in this case, we don't need this plus or minus because check the region of integration from 0 to 2. It's only defining the positive part of the radical function. So no need for this plus or minus. So just go with square root of x. Otherwise, well, we... If in this case we had the limits of integration on this side, the integration on this side, and the line right here, well, that'll be a different story, and in that case we would have used the negative root of x. But that's not the case, okay? So, and the second function, y equals to 2x, uh, well, just solve for x, that's one half of y. No big deal to solve for x. So now we have functions of x. Uh, hold on. This should be square root of y, not square root of x, okay? So let's go about this. Let's go about the setup, of course. So this is what's going on. This region right here is being rotated about the horizontal line y equals to, I mean, x equals to 5. So, again, from, from the axis of rotation, we're going to have another way defined by the parabola or the right function in this, in this notation and a linear radius bounded by the diagonal line y equals to 2x or x rather equals to 1 half because we're working 1 half y. We're working with functions of y this time. Okay, so let's Let's make a picture first. Let's, uh, so this is what we want. This is the axis of revolution. This is our region of integration. All right, so we're going to find the volume of the whole thing as if we didn't have that hollow space. All right, in minus, we will subtract the hollow part. And in this case, the hollow part will be this. Is everyone following me with the picture here? Is everything making sense so far? Okay, so not top minus bottom in this case because we have horizontal uh, functions of y. What do we do instead of top minus bottom this time? Right. right most minus left most. That's correct. So let's do right most minus left most. And again, this will be for big R and is for little r as we discussed which one is the outermost radius and which one is the innermost radius well so from left to right rightmost this one right here is yes the parabola y equals x squared but again we are taught we're using this time functions of y so oops yes so this is x equals to square root of y and this is x equals to negative 5. This is also x equals to negative 5 and this is mm -hmm, 1 half y. Alright, this doesn't look like a y, let me make it look like a y, that is it. And well, let's do rightmost minus leftmost for each big R and little r. 
and well big R will be defined as the square root of y minus negative 5 and little r 1 half y minus negative 5 well of course minus negative 5 that turns into positive 5 let's do and plus 5 so we have all the information that we need to find the to, to compute this integral but well let's list the intersection point zero comma zero and this we say <clears throat> this is two comma two comma four where do i get the y value well just plug in x equals two in any x squared or two x right doesn't matter which one you do because ultimately this point of intersection came from uh putting the two functions together so it should be the same Okay, let's set up the integral. Volume equals pi integral, not from A to B, however, from C to D. And big R squared minus little r squared with respect, not with respect x, but with respect y this time. That's equal to pi integral from 0 to 4. Those are the limits in the y direction, c to d, not 0 to 2 in the x direction. And just substitute for big R, root of y minus 5, squared minus 1 half y plus 5, squared. And that's the integral that calculates the volume. Yes. Uh, that's what I meant. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah. And that's the final answer. Well, that's the integral only. And again, we're not going to spend a whole lecture evaluating this integral binomial squares with radicals, rational powers. Uh, that's going to take a good minute to do. But if you're curious about, you want to do it on your own, you should get 16 pi as a final answer. Okay. The most important thing here is how to set up the problem and again a problem like this on the 10 it's going to be set up only you will be tested on how to number one set up the integral based on how you do these pictures to um, to get the integral and not really computing the integral you may get one exercise of finding the volume but it will be on a simpler region you know like the examples one through three that we did in this section and let's do one more. The other case that we did, uh, an axis of revolution below the region, one above the region. The, the example that we just did is to the left of the region. So this one will be one to the right of the region of integration. So, so this will be, again, 2x and y equals x squared but in this case our axis of revolution is the line the vertical line y equals to 6 so that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 okay so and that's going to be our axis of rotation x equals to 6 so this region has to be reflected the following way. Like this, all right? Very similar to the previous example, but kind of upside down. And this is going to change the direction of the outermost and the innermost radius. Well, so, again, from the axis of rotation, we will have an outermost radius which in this case it's not going to be the parabola it's going to be the diagonal line and an innermost radius which is bounded not by by the line this time but rather by the parabola well defined in terms of y for each so let's do the same picture as before so in the previous example because we had the axis of revolution to the left we had axis of revolution to the left region we will reverse the order this time because we have the axis of revolution to the right 
and well let's draw a picture so we want this this will be equal to the entire volume minus the hollow part. Do we agree that this is the hollow part? Is this picture clear before setting up the integral? Well, the first... This is again big R, this is little r. And we're not going to do top minus bottom anymore because we're doing a rotation in the other direction. We're going to do instead rightmost minus leftmost individually. All right, so let's see. Uh, so number one, the rightmost, which in this case is the line x equals to six, and the leftmost, which is the line x equals to one half of y. All right, and again, this is also the, ver the vertical line x equals to six, but in this case, this is the, ho the parabola still, the parabola x equals to the square root of y, not y equals to the square root of x. Of course, they are the same, but again, we are defining everything in terms of functions of y. And the usual, r equals rightmost minus leftmost, 6 minus 1 half y. And little r, rightmost minus leftmost, 6 minus root of y. And we have all the information that we need to set up the integral that will calculate this volume. All right. So volume in symbols first, that's pi integral from C to D, not from A to B. Uh, big R, outer radius squared minus little r, inner radius squared with respect, oh, I almost wrote with respect x, that's with respect y. And just plug in, you know, where it corresponds, here and here. In the same way that we did it with the other exercises. So, this is equal to pi integral from 0 to 4, because this is 0, 0, this is 2 comma 4 and that's a 6 minus a half y squared minus 6 minus the square root of y squared with respect y. And that's the integral that will calculate the volume and of course if you want to do this on your own you should get the following 40 pi over 3. Question. So if I try to Solve it, have to solve the purple part uh -huh. and have to calculate the same way you write to that. Would that be the same result? I'm guessing it should. However, if you do it the other way, that's a good question. Uh, if you do it the other way, no, that's not going to contrast. Uh, yes. Well, the outermost radius this time will not be the will, well, will still be the line and the innermost radius so you might get the terms reversed yeah. and it may not matter because what are you what what do we do when we square the terms regardless of whether they are in one direction or the other with their being squared so when we change the di the direction of the difference that changes the sign of the quantity inside parentheses. I'm talking about this parentheses here. Yeah. But we're squaring them. That doesn't matter because negative square becomes positive, so it's still the same. So it doesn't matter. However, we all, we always go with, with with the region, with the plotted region, not the not the reflected region. Yeah. Because yes. I mean, you can always. Put the two inside, it, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter. You will get these two guys right here reversed. So instead of 6 minus 1 half y, you would get uh, 1 half y minus 6. But then in this case, when you square them, 
it doesn't matter because we square a negative quantity. Yes. When we when we reverse the order of a different, that changes the sign. But be, that being squared remains positive. So, all right. So this is rotating, uh, finding volumes of solids of revolution using the disk washer method. Okay, give me give me one second for the next topic. I need I need to I need a I need 